I want to welcome all of you at all of our campuses. And we've been so excited about this series and seeing what God is doing in relationships and really seeing people's lives being changed. I want to thank God for all of our campuses, though, uh, down in Stone County. I mean, just stuff you don't know about. We started a new thing called House Parties. And we had like 175 people in Stone County, like kids, students. And, uh, and it's just amazing what's happening in Gulfport had like 47 people 48 kids and so you're willing to try new things and when we try new things we find new ways to reach people and and I thank you for that uh, we're in a series called the nine and if you've not been here you can podcast this we have a podcast just go on your apple phone and do venture church and you can listen to all the messages one through five and you're going to find out that God made you unique Okay, you may not like the way you're wired, but God likes the way you're wired. Uh, you're not an accident. He has a plan for you. Uh, he loves you. He wants to live with you for eternity in heaven. And that's why I preach every weekend. That's why I'm excited every weekend. Because I know there's going to be somebody that hears that for the first time. That God's not out to get you. He's out to love you. And uh, he wants a relationship with you that uh, when you leave this building... He's not up in this room. Uh, he goes with you. Now, we're looking at the sixes, and the sixes, the super sixes, are amazing people. If you're married to a six, you're fortunate. If you've got a friend who's a six, you're fortunate. If you have, and our people that go to venture and serve, they're the loyal people. They're the people that never call in sick. I mean, they're going to be there. They come in with a broken leg, and they're bleeding because they're loyal the sixes are loyalists, and if you have a six in your life, you are so blessed. Uh, but the thing about sixes that's a real challenge for them is that they like to hope for the best and plan for the worst. Okay, the sixes are the people that bought the book, Worst Case Scenario. You ever see that book, Worst Case Scenarios? I have it. And uh, it, 10 million copies sold because there's so many sixes. And it's little things like if you are attacked by a shark, what do you do? You know, and I like reading all that stuff and just knowing. You never know, right? And uh, like if, if a, a group of wild buffaloes charge you, how do you handle it? You know, and, and so sixes have that like in their purse or in their back pocket because you never know when something like that could happen and you need to be ready. Okay, and so that is the sixes and we thank God for you. Uh, and we're going to look at a six today in the Bible that's one of my favorite people. And, and his name is Peter, okay, St. Peter. And, and so if you're a six, I want you to know Jesus chose a six to lead the disciples. I mean, he gets you. He knows you're loyal. He knows you're going to be there. He knows you're going to step up. And so we're going to look at Peter today, and you're going to see some great things about Peter, and you're going to see some things where Peter is still in process, okay? Give you the background. Jesus has fed 5,000 people. That's not a small feat. Okay, we'll have 5,000 people at night of worship, and we're going to try to, like, work that whole thing out. Jesus, we're taking a happy meal. He takes a happy meal and feeds 5,000 people. Okay, I wish you were here. It'd save us a lot of money. But, but the reality is, I mean, like, all these people are eating, and they're like, hey, we want to make you king because you feed us. I mean, we want free food. We, we, we want a king that feeds us buffets. And Jesus, so as not to grab a hold of the fame and power, sends the disciples away and he goes into a mountain to pray. That's a good word to all of us. When you're in a position of receiving fame or power, you may want to run from it. You may want to say, hey, let me wait, okay? Because you, you may be looking for me to do things that I'm not going to do for you. So we find this in Matthew chapter 14 if you want to open your Bibles there, it's a famous passage, and, and I love this passage because it shows so much of us in trying to be all that God has called us to be, and it's difficult. I mean, when you leave here, let's just face it, it's hard, okay? So Matthew 14, 22, immediately Jesus made the disciples get in the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd of people, and they were full, had 12 baskets left over. And after he had dismissed them, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. And later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already considerable distance from the land, and it was buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. 
And shortly after dawn, two or three o'clock in the morning, he went out to them walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. They said, it's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. And Jesus said, hey, take courage, grab a hold of some courage because it is I, don't be afraid. And, and Peter said, he's, an, he's a six, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, well, come on. And Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water and he came to Jesus. And when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him and said, you, oh, you have little faith, why did you doubt? You've got a little faith, your faith is going to grow. I'm going to help you grow your faith. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. And when those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly you're the son of God, we get it now. And when they crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret. And when the men of the place recognized Jesus, they sent word to the surrounding people. And people brought all of their sick to him and begged him to let the sick just touch the edge of his cloak and all who touched were healed. Now you're like, what does all that mean? Well, I'm going to give you a word that every six hates to hear. Every six hates to hear the word immediately now. Go now. Do it now. And Jesus immediately sends them away in a boat at night. And I think this is funny because sixes are going, well, what if this happens? Or what if that happens? Or well, what's the plan if this goes on? I mean, like, like, you know, we need to look at this and make sure that this goes on. No, immediately he sends them away. And the reason sixes hate that word immediately is because the core challenge and sin of a six is fear. That fear. And you say, I didn't know fear was a sin. Yeah, fear is the absence of faith. And you say, well, I fear that makes me look bad. No, wait till we get to the eight. When I preach on the eights, I'm an eight. You know what my core sin is? Lust. How'd you like to have that sermon? Okay, so, so fear feel, feels a little bit better than, well, I lust. You're at lust, you know. And, and I'm going to bring it on the eight, so you need to be here. But, but you, you have an issue of fear. And it's, there's a reason that you have fear. It's because our culture pours into the fear mongering. I mean, if you turn on television and, and you look, if you look at any of the cable news networks, you're going to go crazy. Th think about what they do to you sixes. Now think about this. When you turn on CNN and you see Wolf, Wolfy, Wolf Blitzer in the Situation Room, and there's breaking news every single day. Every single day, Wolf, he's, he's those little beady eyes. He looks like a wolf. I mean, I'm not being ugly, but he looks like a wolf. He goes, breaking news, Donald Trump is an alien. I mean, you know, every single week there's something new, you know, that you're afraid of. You know, we're going to all die. You say, well, I go to Fox. Fox? Fox News? They're saying the progressives are coming after your guns. You need to run for the hills. Nancy Pelosi, she's a terrorist. And, and so everywhere you turn, there's something, in, you know, that's like filling you up with fear. And, and then you have the commercials. We're not done yet. I mean, you got the commercials, like the ring security system. I mean, sixes have got, he's, they got two security systems. I mean, you never know. One might break down. And so I was a friend, with, a friend of mine this week. I was with him in a business meeting, and, and, and his phone kept ringing. I said, man, what is it? Oh, that's my ring at home. Every time a car drives down the road, it calls me. I'm like, dude, that is insane. And, and then you've got the Allstate commercial, Mayhem. I love that dude. Like, I know people like that, you know. He's like, you want to protect yourself from mayhem like me. And so they're working you all the time. And sixes, if you're not careful, you'll be paralyzed with fear. I mean, you'll be afraid. You'll be anxious all the time. I'm not saying you should never be afraid. I'm not saying you should never be anxious. I deal with anxiety. It's a whole other series this spring on anxiety and depression that I'm going to share with you that's going to blow your mind. But, but the reality is, and I want you to get this, every six listening to my voice, 85% of the things you worry about, get this, never happen. You need to tattoo that. Maybe on your husband. But you, you need to write that down because 85% of the things that you go to bed at night worrying about, you get up in the day worrying about, they never happen. It, it's not going to happen. That's why Jesus says you need to stop worrying about tomorrow. He says you, you don't need to worry about tomorrow because tomorrow's worries will take care of themselves. He says stop worrying. Stop being afraid. 
Fear is the opposite of faith. And so immediately Jesus sends them away. And then I hate it because six ago, well, I knew it. Immediately a storm comes up. And I don't know if you've ever been in a boat when the waves are really bad. Anybody been in a boat when the waves are really bad? And yeah, they're like in a canoe, okay? Like we're, Alicia and I on a cruise ship one time. I didn't have a lot of money, so, so I got this cruise. I was so excited about it. The boat was about as big as this lectern. And uh, so we were out in the middle of the ocean, you know, and all of a sudden we were with some, a couple friend of ours, and it started rolling. And, and I'm going to tell you, I'm not a six, but I started kind of getting nervous. And rolling, and I was grabbing a hold. People were grabbing a hold. It was like the Poseidon adventure. You know, if you've ever go back and Google that. And, and you say, well, you just need a bigger boat. You know, well, how about the Titanic? I mean, you know, I'm thinking all these things. And, and then all of a sudden it happened. It was like the Bellagio, like, like, like the show at Bellagio. You know, if you've been there, I've not been there. I've seen on TV where, where they do the fountain show. All of a sudden people start throwing up. Listen, when you get seasick, it is crazy. Yeah, the kids are like, it was nasty. Grown men projectile. It, it was amazing. I'll stop now, but I'm just telling you, like, like they were afraid, so don't look down on them saying they shouldn't have been afraid. They should have, they should have known Jesus is with them. Well, you should know Jesus is with you, with you too. And, and so they're in a storm, and it's crazy. They're in the Sea of Galilee at 648 feet below sea level, and the storms just come over without any warning. And it comes over the mountains, and they are going crazy. And you say, well, why is that? Why do, listen, Jesus said, in this world, you will have storms. So, so you need to get that. Some of you are mad at God because you've had issues in your life. And he says, I'm going to tell you, this world, it's issues. You, you can't drive down Hardy Street and not have issues. He says, in this world, you will have problems. So you accept that. But here's the thing. The storms come from different places. Some of the storms you're going through, I hate to tell you this because I love you, are storms you've created. I do this all the time when I'm talking with people. And, 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 I've, and a lot of the storms that I have, I've created. I'm not, I'm not saying I don't, I'm not right there. But a lot of times when you're objective and people tell you, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm not going to do that and we're going to do this and I'm going to date him. I'm going to date him. My mom and daddy don't like him. But what do my mom and daddy know? I mean, I'm going to change him. I'm going to make it. Burn. And, you know, I'm going like, oh, this is going to be a storm. Oh, Jesus, come quickly. I mean, you know, and sometimes it's storms you create. Sometimes it's storms other people create. And, and I hate that because, you know, they don't take care of themselves. They do the wrong things. And, and all of a sudden their irresponsibility becomes your responsibility. And sometimes storms are just inevitable. And uh, I talked to a lady yesterday. She found out she has cancer. Loves the Lord, you know, has served the Lord. And, and sometimes those storms come into your life. And, and the six is going, well, that's why I'm afraid. Because that's what happens. Well, don't you know the third thing? Immediately Jesus comes walking on the water. Let me tell you a little word. This is, and, and I get to study and think about this all the time. Uh, don't ever think that when you're in a storm, you're alone. Because Jesus is with you. Jesus is coming for you. He gets you. And when you forget that, your faith fades. When you forget Jesus is with you, your faith kind of goes into the hole and fear takes over your life. When you get those test results, you forget Jesus is with you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You get that call in the middle of the night or 3 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my, what am I going? He's, he's with you. Listen, don't ever forget when you leave here, Jesus Christ is with you. Oh, they're downsizing at work. He, he, he's with you. you. You're not alone. I mean, he's got you. He, he said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. When you leave here and you face storms and you're six and you're going, I'm even afraid to leave. I don't know what's going to happen this semester. I don't know if I'm going to pass this test. He's with you. And in the middle of that, immediately, Peter asked, to come to Jesus. Now, now I've always read that and thought, God, what a man of faith. He's a six. Do you get that? Peter's a six. Can I ask you a question? I'm kind of letting my voice kind of go down low, so you'll have to listen closely. Why would a six ever get out of a boat and three o'clock in the morning? I mean, their core, like their core sin is fear, right? 
Why would, he, why would a six get out of the boat? Why, why wouldn't these other guys get out of the boat? Why, why, why wouldn't Thomas get out of the boat? He's an investigator. Why didn't he get out of the boat? Why, why, did, why didn't you know, Simon, Simon get out of the boat? He got out of the boat because his core motivation was security. See, Peter put it all together. Sixes, I want you to hear this. When the storm came and it was crazy and he saw Jesus, he called for him because his core motivation was, I want to feel safe and I want to feel secure. And I know that I am safer and secure out there on the waves with you than I am in the boat without you. Now that's a word. When you understand that the safest place for you to be is with Jesus Christ, sixes, you need to hear this. There are going to be times in your life when you are paralyzed with fear. And Jesus says, no, I know you're afraid. I know you can barely move. But you need to step out of this because I'm over here. I'm taking you over here. You're going to be okay because I am with you. And if I am with you, hey, I'm going to make it all work out. You need to hear that and so do I. Because every time we go overseas and we're with our kids and our grandkids... I say the same thing to myself. God, they need to be where I can help them. (laughs) It sounds funny when I say it now, but every time I see my grandkids, because I love my grandkids so much, I know I've said that before, but I do. I just love them. And we're together, and I'm feeding them, and I know they're okay. Because, you know, none of us older adults trust our kids to raise our grandkids. We know y'all cry, cry. And so when they're with me, I hope they're not watching this. But, you know, when when I'm with them, I'm thinking, they just need to be with me. they need to be where, like, if something happens, I can get there. And I, can tell you, I know people, like, you know, I can make sure they get this, they can get that, they can get this, and they get that. What they need is Messiah Jeff because he can take care of all their needs. And I was saying that, and I said that to Alicia, and I said that to Alicia. And we got on an airplane, and we were flying from Paris, and, and, uh, and, and we were flying, like, over these huge mountains. I don't know if it's the Swiss Alps. I don't know what it was, but they were, they were um, huge. And all of a sudden, as we're flying, I, I'm, not, I'm not making this up. Now, I, I didn't plan this, but, but all of a sudden, we dropped about 10,000 feet. Have you ever been at the Tower of Terror at Disney World? Have you ever done that? You know, they say you can hold a coin like that and it will hover up. What idiot is not holding on with both hands? I mean, like, yeah, right, I want a coin, yeah. I mean, you're just like, the, we dropped in the whole airplane. It was a shriek of terror. I don't mean like, oh, this is fun, terror. Like, we're dying now. And I thought, and Alicia grabbed my arm. That's what's wrong with my arm. <laughs> She's got a grip. And, and, and she grabbed my arm. She started screaming, oh, no, oh, no. I said, Hush. I did, and I said, it's okay, baby. And everybody was screaming, and and, and I don't know why, but when when I'm in terror like that, everything starts calming down for me. Everything gets real quiet. I'm starting to look around and think about, like, who I'm going to step over to get us out of the plane first. Yeah, and, and then I'm thinking, well, maybe I can lead some of these people to the Lord because that man just went on himself, and I can go, you're about to meet Jesus. Are you ready? And so all these things are going through my mind. I'm not kidding. This is what my mind thinks. I'm sick like this. Like, I'm thinking things while I'm talking that it has nothing to do with church. I mean, I'm cray-cray. But, but I'm thinking, then all of a sudden God says, oh, you want your grandkids with you right now, big guy? And he dropped again about 5,000 feet. And I sheepishly said under my breath, no, sir. No, sir. And the pilot came on and said, I have no idea what happened. We didn't see that coming. Like, we're sorry. The rest of the trip should be fine. I'm like, because I got to answer. That the safest place for my family to be is with Jesus. There's not a zip code you can go to. There's not a house big enough you can live in. There's not a boat big enough for you to sail in. But if you're not with Jesus where you should be very afraid because when you know you're with Jesus, you're at a safe place because nothing can happen to you that doesn't come through his hands. Let me tell you something. Faith is a process and not an event. And I want you to get this. I was thinking about this as we were singing the songs back there. This happens like like when when stuff comes to you, you can't just take what we're doing in the big rooms all over our campuses and go, well, that's enough to last me all all week. Because faith leaks. 
Let me tell you what happens after this, not too long after this. Peter uh, says to Jesus, Jesus says, i got to go to the cross and die. And you, know what, you know what number six goes? No, you're not going to do that. And you're not, you're not going to die. So I'm feed 5,000 people. So I'm heal people. So, so I'm cast demons out. And, and walked on the water with Jesus. And he's saying to Jesus, no, we're not going to do that. You're safer with me. I'm going to take care of you. You're not going to die. See, your faith leaks. You're, you're going to make mistakes. And sixes, I need you to hear this. When you make a mistake and when you sin and when you're afraid, don't give up. God's not done with you. Faith is a process. It's not an event. Sixes, if you've got sixes that are children, they love people in authority. They will follow people in authority. They, they will follow the rules until they are hurt, until they are lied to. Then all of a sudden, they're going to worry about everybody. Can I trust anybody? You say, well, what do I do? You focus on the reality of Jesus with you wherever you are. That, listen, I know that sounds like a Jesus juke. You know what Jesus juke is? Where you go and just and you juke them like this to Jesus? No, no, it's not a Jesus juke. Listen, it, it is when you are in your like in your marriage and you're worried about your marriage. You focus on Jesus in your marriage and not your spouse. Because if you focus on your spouse, you're going to be drowning. In your family, you, you you focus on Jesus in your family. You don't focus on your 13 year old. You're drowning. When it comes to your finances, you don't focus on your finances. You focus on Jesus in your business and your finances because if you look at your spreadsheet, you're drowning because Jesus is with you. And the Bible says immediately Jesus reaches out to him and he walks with him into the boat. I love that. He was not an unhealthy one who said, hey, you know what? You need to tighten up. You, you need to learn. You don't, you, what were you thinking? I mean, didn't you focus on me? No, he goes, hey, hey, I'll walk with you. I've got you. And, and, and he walks with them to the boat. And the Bible says that all the disciples get this. for the first, They worshiped him. I'm going, dude, you feed 20,000 people with a piece of fish? I'm going to worship you. You, you. you cast out demons and the demons are running and screaming, I'm going to worship you. Listen, worship is something that you work at. Worship is something you do outside of just Sunday morning. I mean, worship is something that you have to practice. It is a process. Let me tell you why we do what we do. I'll do this real quick and we'll get to the end because I'm going to tell you how to love a six and we're going to pray for a six. But the reason we do what we do at Venture, why it's so important that you get, we're not just showing up to give you something else to do. We're giving you a process that will build your faith and build your relationship with Jesus Christ because when you leave here, the storms are waiting on you. Everything in our world is after you. It's not enough to come once a month and get like a message and coffee and leave. You will be eaten. That's why we invite people to come. That's why, if you have never invited somebody to come to worship, man, you're just, you'll, never get, you'll never get venture. Until you invite somebody to come to venture and they come to venture and you watch their eyes light up and they come to know the Lord and you're standing behind them in the baptistry, you'll never get venture. You'll never get it. Because you ought to be inviting all the time. You ought to be inviting all the time. You can't be part-time in growing with Jesus. I mean, he is with you. If you want him with you, you got to practice his, his presence with you. And you're inviting people, and you're inviting people, and you're inviting people, and you're inviting people, and then you're inviting people. That's what I do. Everywhere I go, it's weird. People come to me and go, hey, basically, I promise you, I'll be in a, a room full of people I do not know. And they walk up to me and go, hey, can you tell me how to be saved? It is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. But it's because I'm open to it. We invite people. We create all these, the, these environments. We, we do a, a video wall. We, we invite them to the night of worship. You know why? You get 5,000 people in a room that uses sits when they have a ball game, 1,000 people. People are going to go, whoa, whoa, I'm not alone. You invite people. You invest in people. You get in a group. You can't do this by yourself. You can't always find me. You say, well, I know Jeff. Look, 100,000 people know me. I go to other countries and people walk up to me and I can't help them all. 
You, you invest, you impress through serving. Sixes, listen to me, sixes. You need to get out of your boat of control and you need to step out somewhere in venture and you need to start serving so that you overcome your fears. Some of you need to be giving. You're not giving. You're, you're afraid to give. You're a six. Well, what if this happens? What if that happens? You've got so much stockpile that when you die, your kids are going to fight over all your junk. I don't know where that came from. That wasn't even in the notes. Because faith is a process. Fear is immediate, but faith is a process. And faith leaks. Dude, one of the worst things can happen in your life it is for you to go rogue, for you to not get involved, for you not to be a part of the process. Like, I got this. And be like Peter around the campfire when a little girl says, Weren't you with, weren't you with Jesus? He goes, I don't know who he is. I don't know who he is. So when you get around a campfire with the wrong people, and all of a sudden, hey, uh, didn't you? I saw you. I, and you start cursing and you know, you're popping another one down. All of a sudden, you're in trouble. It's the process. I sound like Nick Saban. But, but it is the process. It, it is getting involved in the system. It is letting God work in you. Let him do things in you that you can't do on your own because your faith leaks. You need a system. I want you to write this down, especially men, especially businessmen and women. You need a system that's working in you that you don't control. Uh-huh. Because the reason you're so afraid all the time, people are only telling you what you want to hear and you won't go to hear what you don't want to hear and therefore you're in trouble. You desperately need to get out of your boat. If you don't, sixes, fear will dictate the direction and quality of your life. And at Venture, this is what we're trying. We don't do any extra things. We don't do a lot of big events, you know, like, like having conferences and all that because we know we do four things. Everything we do goes back into four things. Because we know you need to be inviting. We know you need to be invested. We know you need to be impressing. We know you need to be igniting. Why? Because fear will take over your life if you don't. And you need to be growing. This is how we'll help you grow in four ways. One, in yourself. To trust that you can do the things God has called you to do. You, you need confidence in yourself. Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid and do the work that my God has sent you to do for my God is with you. He is with you. Get out of your comfort zone. Had a young man this week. It was so good. It was so cool. He's, he's like in his early 20s and he did a little, we do a little run thing on th Thursdays and he came back and he goes, man, that was terrible. Man, I was horrible. Man, that was terrible. I said, how old are you? So I'm, I'm 22, 23. I said, I have been here 33 years. You think you're going to get it all today? I said, bro, you're in process. God has got you. We're going to teach you. We're going to pour into you. And we want to give you confidence in yourself and confidence in God. Why? Because he is our refuge. He alone is my refuge. I will trust in him, Psalm 91 too. You say, I don't know if God will come through for me. God, one time something happened. You don't know the whole story. God has never let you down. God has always been there for you to, to give you more confidence in your relationship with other people. You know what happens with a six? When you hurt a six and you're in a friendship with a six and you're in a group with a six and you don't invite them and, and you lie to them or you shade the truth of them, they are hurt. And here's a word for six is never, but never let kindness and loyalty leave you. Because when you're still loyal and kind, when people don't treat you the way they should, you're never more like Jesus Christ. Be loyal. Even when other people, don't let other people dictate your attitude. A few years ago, I'll do this real quick and we're going to be done. <clears throat> a few years ago, I got into a conflict with a guy. It was, a, it was a, like a in the public eye conflict. I know that's hard to believe because I'm a peacemaker. And, uh, but, but this is what happened. I mean, like, like, Hey, I don't like, I'm not looking for no fight. You know, like I'm trying, like I try to be good. Just don't bring out the bad gel. That's where I rationalize it. And he kept pulling on the tail and he got to the teeth. And, uh, when he got to the teeth, it was all on. I mean, it was on. Oh, you want some of that? Oh, you want some of this? Oh, you want some of that? Oh, you want some of this? And it had to get in the public eye. And so everything I said and did was like in the newspaper. And I was like, dang, I'm so glad he didn't say, put the other stuff I said in there. And. And I thought, ah, you know what? He deserved it. And a man I don't even know came up to me and said, you know what? The godly man would 
would be the first to apologize. Yeah, he said, you know, the godly, you, you got down on his level. You tried to out-dirty him. And God convicted me. He said, you're going to apologize to that man. I said, I'm not going to apologize. God, I, for what? I mean, God and I had this conversation. For, for, for what? For him being ugly to me? And, and, and sure enough, it, it happened. I did a funeral. I'm almost done, but i got to tell you this. i get this off my, out of my system. Uh, and, and we were at a funeral, and I ran away because I was doing the funeral, and I ran away to, for the funeral to not uh, to have to talk to him, and I ran right into him. And I felt my mouth saying, I'm so sorry for the things I said about you. I didn't mean for my mouth to move. And God worked in an amazing way to bring healing. And, and not too long after that, that guy died. And, and, and I realized, man, if you're not careful, as a six, any number, you'll let other people dictate your attitude. And you can't let that happen. You say, well, how did Peter do? Let me tell you, Peter's a loyalist. Peter's a six. In and, and, and AD 65, you know what happened to Peter? They crucified him. They brought him to Rome. You can go there now. There's a chapel there over where his skull is. They found the skull bone of Peter. And uh, <clears throat> but you know what, what they did when they said, we're going to crucify you. He goes, well, then crucify me upside down. Why? Because he's loyal. He said, I deny Jesus, and I don't deserve to be crucified right side up. Crucify me with my head down toward the ground. That's a six, baby. That's why you need to love a six. You say, well, how do you love a six? Let me give you four ways you need to write these down. Some of you are married to sixes. Some of you have employees that are sixes. Some of you have children that are sixes. This is how you love them. Number one, be consistent and always tell them the truth. With a loyalist, a person, they would, they would always tell you the truth. They would always tell you more than the truth. Don't shade the truth from a six or they'll never trust you. You'll break their heart. You'll wound them. Number two, thank them for their, their loyalty. It's so easy to take sixes for granted. I mean, they're always there. They always do the right thing. I mean, they're always there for you. I mean, have you ever stopped and looked at your spouse who's a six or an employee or a kid and say, I just want to thank you that you always try to follow the rules. You always try to do the right thing. Number three, support them in taking more risks. It's okay to say to a six, hey, hey, I know you're concerned. I know you're afraid. Well, we're gonna, I'll be with you. We'll do this together. Encourage them to try things they're not sure they can do. If you've got a child that's a six and, and, you're the, and you think that they want to run for office like a, a, one of the offices at school and I just nobody would vote for me. Well, they may not. But let's, let's give it a try. Why don't we try? Why don't we learn? We'll be with you. I'll make sure five people vote for you. I'll take them to get donuts. I mean, you find a way to encourage them. Number four, be patient with them when they're paranoid. I don't know if we ought to go there. I don't know if we ought to do that. What if this happens? What if that happens? I'm not sure. Wait, will you just not be so angry with them and just shut them off and just leave them just just you need people like that in your life and, and just learn to love a six now we're going to say a prayer for the sixes and we'll be done and and I want you to pray all of us to pray this together because you know the more I've studied and and prepared for today I knew something was missing Thursday and I kind of went back I've stayed up here all morning, Saturday morning, praying and going, what are, you, what are you missing? And God says, what you're missing is compassion for people that are afraid because you're always jumping out. We'll find, we'll find a parachute. You know, jump out of the plane. You know, and I'm like, and he says, that, that's not normal. That's not healthy. You need to love the sixes that work adventure because they're the reason you're where you are, big daddy. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you that you choose people like us who are riddled with doubt and fear. Thank you for taking us by the hand and leading us to be the wave walkers and faith followers. Help us to encourage and lovingly connect to others in community. Help us rest in your power and goodness. Amen. By your heads, close your eyes. Hey, sixes, we love you. I know you get tired of being afraid. I, I know you get tired of the anxiety that comes over you like a wave. But I want you to hear something. Jesus 
is with you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. And on top of that, we're for you. We want to walk beside you. We want to encourage you. We want to lift you up. We want to bless you. We want to thank you because people like me wish they could be like you. Father, I thank you for every person that's listening to this message wherever they are. But God, I want to thank you today, especially for the people who get forgotten, who are always loyal, who are always there, who are always serving, who are always giving, who are always helping. And it just seems the people around them don't even notice or don't even care. God, for all the wounded sixes that are listening to my voice, heal their hearts, heal their souls. They've been wounded in their souls. Some of them when they were kids, they thought they could trust that teacher, thought they could trust that coach. They thought they could, whoever it is, teach them they can learn how to trust you. And God, we thank you for your grace and mercy and thank you for giving us sixes. And we thank you in Jesus' name.